In this video, let's understand regarding the hormone which is secreted from the posterior pituitary, which is called as the antidiuretic hormone, and it is also called as arginine vasopressin. A brief introduction, then we will see on what receptors does this hormone act. This is one of the hormone uh, for which we have to also know the mechanism of action. This is usually asked in your examination, and then the actions, then the regulation, and very, very important question comes on diabetes insipidus, and that's the clinical aspects. So let's understand what is this ADH, which is also called as AVP or arginine vasopressin. Now, this is a neurohormone, and this is synthesized where it is synthesized in supraoptic nucleus. So where is the supraoptic nucleus present? The supraoptic nucleus is present in the hypothalamus. Where exactly, to be more specific, it is synthesized? To be more specific, it is synthesized in the cell bodies of the neurons, which are called as the magnocellular neurons. So once it is synthesized in the hypothalamus, it is transported via the neurons into the posterior pituitary, and this connection which is existing between the hypothalamus and the posterior pituitary that is called as hypothalamo hypophysial tract so once it is in the posterior pituitary whenever required it is released and it enters into the blood and then I, then it acts on the receptors and then it leads to the actions it's also called as as we as i have already told you avp which is nothing but arginine vasopressin now this hormone is synthesized as a pre pro hormone and the name of that pre pro hormone is pre pro presophysin okay now, there are three receptors on which vasopressin acts. The first one is called as the V1A receptor. Now, this V1A receptor is present in the smooth muscles of the blood vessels. And when vasopressin acts on this receptors, it causes vasoconstriction. Second one receptor is what is called as the V1B receptor. This receptor is present in the anterior pituitary gland. And when vasopressin acts on this receptor, it helps in regulation of the ACTH, or to be more specific, it increases the secretion of ACTH. And one of the most important action, or the one of the most important receptor, that is called as a V2 receptor, where it is present, it is present in the collecting ducts of the kidney. And what is its action here? Here it is going to cause reabsorption of water. That is why. The hormone is called as antidiuretic hormone. So, what's the meaning of diuresis? Diuresis means loss of excessive water from the kidneys. Okay. Now, it is not allowing that. So, it is causing reabsorption of the water. That's why it is called as antidiuretic hormone. And remember that all the three receptors, they belong to what is called as G protein coupled receptor group. Here, the thing which is asked is the mechanism of action pertaining to its action on the renal tubule. So, where is it acting to be more specific? It is acting on the collecting ducts. In the collecting ducts, on which cell does it act? It acts on a cell which is called as the P cell. Here, P means principal cell. Now, this P cell has got a apex. This is called as apic apical membrane. Okay, apical membrane is the one towards which we have the lumen of the tubule and in the lumen we have the filtrate. Here we have the filtrate in this side. Okay, and we have the other side of the membrane which is called as the basolateral. This membrane what you are seeing, this is called as the basolateral membrane. This membrane what you are seeing, this is called as the apical membrane and adjacent to the basolateral membrane we have the interstitial space and then we will be having the blood vessels here. Fine. And what is the receptor on which the ADH is acting? The receptor on which the ADH is acting is what is called as a V2 receptor. So the first point, if they ask you the mechanism of action of ADH that you are supposed to write that, ADH is going to bind to this V2 receptor. Upon binding of ADH or arginine vasopressin to the V2 receptor, the second thing to occur is there is going to be activation of this enzyme which is called as adenyl cyclase. Once there is activation of adenyl cyclase, the third thing to occur is that there is an increase in the secretion of cyclic AMP. Next thing to occur is once there is increased secretion of cyclic AMP, there is activation of protein kinases to be more specific protein kinase A. So once there is activation of the protein kinases, the fifth and the last point to occur is insertion of these vesicles. So these are the vesicles which are inserted where they are inserted. They are inserted into the apical membrane of the P cell. So these are the vesicles. Now what are these vesicles called as? These vesicles are called as aquaporins too. Very important. It can be also asked as a multiple choice question. Which is the aquaporin which is related with the action of ADH? We can give 1, 2, 3, 4. So the correct option would be aquaporin too. Now what is the function of this? vesicles which are incorporated into the apical membrane these act as channels through which the water which is present in the filtrate is going to enter into the cell so this is what is called as reabsorption of the water now once the water has entered into the cell the water from the cell goes into the interstitial space via aquaporin 3 and 4 and from here it goes back into the blood vessels so this is the mechanism of action there are five steps attachment of adh to the v2 receptors activation of adenyl cyclase enzyme increase in the level of cyclic AMP that leads to activation of protein kinases that causes insertion of the protein vesicles into the apical membrane. These are nothing but aquaporins too, through which the water is entering from the lumen, that is from the filtrate back into the cell. And this is what is called as reabsorption of the water. And these are the aquaporins too. So this is the mechanism of action of ADH or 
a G9 vasopressin. So there are totally how many actions now? There are three actions. The most important action is on the kidney, wherein it is leading to reabsorption of the water, which is an anti-diuretic action. Second is on the blood vessels, it is causing vasoconstriction. And third is on the anterior pituitary gland, wherein it is increasing the ACTH secretion. A little bit on the regulation, the most important factor which regulates ADH is plasma osmolality. Whenever there is an increase in the plasma osmolality, there is an increase in the ADH secretion. Whenever there is a decrease in the plasma osmolality, there is a decrease in the ADH secretion. Next important factor is the blood volume. Whenever there is an increase in the blood volume, blood volume is more, what should happen to the ADH? Obviously, there is a decrease in the ADH secretion. I don't want the volume to increase further. So, ADH secretion is going to be less, more amount of water will be lost in the urine. But whenever there is a decrease in the blood volume, what is going to happen to the ADH? I, of course, the body wants to increase the blood volume because of which it is going to cause an increase in the ADH secretion and hence leading to more reabsorption of the water from the renal tubule. Even we can understand this very easily whenever there is a decrease in the blood volume there is going to be also a decrease in the blood pressure and decrease in the blood pressure is also going to cause an increase in the ADH secretion. ADH is also secreted whenever there is activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system again which is happening because of either reduction in the blood pressure or because of the reduction in the sodium in the body. Okay, These are the important points which help in the regulation of ADH or arginine vasopressin. Now this is one of the repeated questions, maybe a two or three marker question or part of a long essay, which is diabetes insipidus. Okay, this occurs because of the deficiency of ADH. So when ADH is not there, what is going to happen? The reabsorption is not going to occur. See, this is our re, uh, this is our uh, renal tubule. These are the cells. Here we have the filtrate and we have the water here. So water is not reabsorbed. That means more amount of water is lost in the urine. That condition is what is called as polyuria. Remember that polyuria is also seen in diabetes mellitus. Okay, so what is polyuria? Abnormally large amount of diluted urine is passed, of course, more than 3.5 liters per day. Now, when there is excessive loss of water in the urine, this is going to stimulate the hypothalamus and it is going to stimulate the thirst center in the hypothalamus. So the person will be very thirsty. Even though the person keeps on drinking the water, more amount of water, more amount of water is also lost. So excessive thirst is what is called as polydipsia. And the urine, if we check the osmolality of the urine, it is a very dilute urine. Osmolality is less than 300 milliosmols per liter. One more important thing that we should understand regarding diabetes insipidus is that there are two types of diabetes insipidus. One is called as the central diabetes insipidus. Another one is called as the nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. So what is the central diabetes insipidus? Here, the problem could be either in the hypothalamus or it could be in the pituitary gland because of which the ADH secretion is less. That is what is happening here. So this is also called as arginine vasopressin deficiency uh, diabetes insipidus. Now there is one more diabetes insipidus which is called as nephrogenic diabetes insipidus wherein enough amount of ADH is synthesized and secreted from the pituitary gland but this ADH is unable to act on the renal tubule. So this is what is called as nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. So if you are writing this much regarding the diabetes insipidus that's more than enough. Write all these features polyuria, polydipsia, dilute urine and write that there are two types of diabetes insipidus a central and a nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. Now, there is one more syndrome wherein the ADH secretion is increased. That is called as SIADH. This is a syndrome of inappropriate ADH. So, when ADH secretion is increasing, what is going to occur here? There is more amount of water reabsorbed from the renal tubule. So, that is going to cause water retention and more amount of extracellular fluid. Okay. So, when fluid increases in the body, what is going to happen to the serum osmolality? The serum osmolality is going to be less and that is going to result in hyponatremia. But what happens to the urine osmolality? The urine osmolality molality will be high. Knowing this much is more than enough regarding SIADH. Now vasopressin has got few of the clinical uses. There are vasopressin analog that is synthetic vasopressin is present in the market in the form of desmopressin, terlipressin and selipressin. Where is that this is used? This is of course used in diabetes insipidus because of the vasoconstrictor property. This can be also used whenever there is bleeding occurring from what is called as esophageal varices also used in few types of circulatory shock. Thank you for listening.